But luckily, I was incredibly paranoid the whole time and just felt like I had a bad stomach about it all. So I got a bunch of buckets of water and dirt ready in case the whole barn went up in flames or something. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, we're in a barn full of hay and dry yeah, and everything. Right, you know, dry and flammable. Real flames. old wood and ooh, probably like a hundred year old barn or something. And so, anyways, yeah, my whole left leg was on fire. And what did I do? I didn't stop, drop, and roll. I ran and jumped and screamed <laughs> until one of my friends who wasn't on fire grabbed one of the buckets and threw it on my leg and put the fire out. Yeah. <laughs> and then I couldn't help but think about it after the fact that it's not even that stop, drop, and roll didn't cross my mind. It's that nothing except for ah! yeah. was going through my mind. I need the fire out. And pull, like, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, fuck. It's just to be able to maintain your wits. In a situation like that, it's, right. it's not likely. But then you also have cases of human beings where, like, where was that? Was it? A, I'm not sure if it was a Tibetan monk, but some monk somewhere in protest set himself on fire. Oh yeah, meditation. was that not in uh, in Vietnam and? Oh yeah, set himself on fire. Actually, that happened a couple of times. There was all kinds of people who were setting themselves on fire in protest of that war. And, Man, uh, you really have to protest something pretty deeply if you're willing to set yourself on fire. fire. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, man, it's holy amazing. moly. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that even to tie into this, this moment that I think kind of changed this public reaction to warfare was that in Vietnam it started to be like televised mm-hmm. and rather than in World War I of this glorified sense of it as people enlisting and thinking it's going to be this fun jovial thing that they're going to go do and they'll be back real soon oh I can only imagine like the kind of propaganda the government was giving yeah. people to get them to enlist oh, right. too like oh some of those uh, old ones of like a German soldier bayoneting this person that looks like your mother and it says like <laughs> will you do nothing till it comes <laughs> to this and it's like like uh, we we definitely went to war because we our reasoning was we're going to go and the Germans are a threat to our Christian way of life and our sense of empire and Canadians joined up and went over and died in droves because some and they were also guys, a real threat to our I, way of life. You know, I, like, I don't know if uh, I don't think I think that war was pretty imperialistic and. In nature, I think a lot of it is just a lot of very secret assurances that happened behind closed doors between different empires, and the fact that a prince got shot, and just like it was World a pow- yeah a powder cake that most certainly happened. Uh, the, mar- the march of imperialism in World War Two is most certainly a different thing, but I think to have this changeover of people really starting to see these gruesome bits of warfare really change their perspective and especially you hear some of these stories of uh, having someone embedded with the uh, 5th Marines doing a patrol in uh, North Vietnam or the South Vietnam and uh, walking around in the bush and as they're broadcasting live is the first guy in the patrol gets shot and drops and dead on sight and they caught that on film and some young mother back on the state side just watched her own son get killed before yeah. the state department letter comes in of so and so your son fell in combat operations but uh, it, it really started to make people go like holy shit this is not at all what I thought this was and I turns out I want this to stop and yeah, the people really came out and droves and the only other war that has no precedence of how much it was opposed was Iraq and yeah that was I, I think for all the people who uh, like one thing that has started to happen is the idea of some of these wars, man, is like they seem to be immensely opposed because we have had these images splashed in our face so much now that we have a pretty good understanding without having to be in the falling B-17. Mm. As we, We've heard these stories and we've gained these perspectives and 
it's really starting to like stick in us and it, it should it, it really should be this disgusting last thing that we should be doing like we should if you're fighting it should be for your absolute survival yeah and you should be picking these battles it shouldn't be just because some young prince somewhere got killed and mm. off for em- god queen and empire we go to die for things that are beyond our understanding mm. Yeah. Do you, um, what, what was I just going to say here? Um, well, so, yeah, I mean, the first thing that popped in my head is just simply, uh, that definitely that, that plays a role in, in, uh, in how wars come about, especially the seems recent ones. Yeah. And then there's also no understating the, uh, proclivity for human malevolence and evil mm. you, you can read about things that human beings have done to other human beings consciously oh, yeah. and perhaps even enjoyed it and uh, <clears throat> and then if you read those things as if they're about you because you're a human being mm-hmm. then uh, well I guess it's so okay I'm working my way to some sort of a point here but I haven't quite articulated it before so yeah. I'm working yeah. through it but uh I guess there's an idea that a lot of modern people have, and maybe it's kind of a new age idea, and uh, I don't mean to cheapen it in that way. Um, I simply just aim to suss out its uh, potential reality, or, or lack thereof maybe even, but uh, which isn't something I would like to come to a conclusion of. Um, so humans are undoubtedly capable of evil and atrocity mm-hmm. and there's the notion from specifically union psychology which Jordan Peterson is a great exponent of he's really great at articulating because Jung can be hard to read um, simply because he was so he's almost like too profound for anyone to even he's deeper than people have even bothered to to be people can't even begin to Mm. claw away at the layers that Jung is already handling um, or was handling but so you have the human capacity for evil and malevolence and and atrocity and that could be said to be latent within every single human being and then you could also say that unless that is made conscious by virtue of the individual aiming for such a thing because you read stories and you take them as stories about you the same way that I take stories about heroes as being stories about you being about human beings because it's not that we're just evil obviously we're good and evil and so if you don't integrate that unconscious you know proclivity then it runs the risk of coming out eventually with its own volition completely without your conscious control or intent Mm -hmm. and then you might wind up doing things that you would never have done under your own conscious control, but you know, you were naive and thought that you were harmless. So you just, you know, you think the whole, I'm a good person story. I could never do that. But then, you know, people can become resentful and bitter and, and angry. And then, you know, given the opportunity one step at a time, you get pushed. Like you hear about how these guards and in, in concentration camps in Germany, it wasn't just that they started out shooting pregnant women naked in the snow in the head. It was one step at a time over a long period of time. And yeah. and it was actually optional a lot of the time, you know, like you're you're allowed to go home, you don't have to do this, but then you know you, your brothers are gonna stay there and do these crazy things. You don't want to yeah. leave them hanging, and then next thing you know, you're doing these crazy things, and then maybe a part of you, sick, twisted part of you, enjoys it somehow. So, point being, I'm wondering if it's possible, because I think this is the question: Is it possible to absolutely avoid war? It, could we get to a point as a race, as, as human species, that we hmm. actually can come to terms with all this kind of stuff and sort ourselves out to the, to a, a high enough degree that you know we're not just naive weaklings who can be pushed around by the whim of our own unconscious desires whenever they decide to manifest, but instead be conscious and awake and integrated and know what we're capable of and then we can actually avoid it because we're not naive because you can't really avoid something that you're naive about but if you're if we're collectively aware that we could all descend into that kind of sheer destruction then maybe we would have a hope and hell of avoiding it 
And I guess my question is, could we someday avoid Can it? We? I have... It, it kind of goes a little bit to the uh, how I see things. And uh, I, I would sum it up as I am uh, the optimistic pessimist. <laughs> I see things in a really shitty manner, but I dream of seeing them in a better one. And uh, I'd like to think that at one point in time, absolutely, there, this possibility does stand a chance. But it, it, I guess it is very easy to become bogged down in like the negativity and being like, war and conflict is just our natural state of being it just seems like the thing that we're always going to wrap around to whether it be for something that we morally justify as like stomping on the rights of others is okay to us because we've come up with a viewpoint of how that's okay rather than maybe meeting people at a, an agreement uh, an agreement table <laughs> yes. but, uh, come to the agreement table come have an agreement with us but I think there are moments where the situation has been on the fast track to war and people have been working insanely hard to try to throw a wrench in the gears of this bigger thing that's working against them and uh, there's even uh, a couple moments of uh, coming up to World War I where these armies are mobilizing and people can really start to see these storm clouds gathering. And I think it's the man Portaleas is the one last guy who's talking to uh, this Russian statesman and he goes, he says to him like, man, please, I beg you, like, call off mobilization. Like you, if you don't see what's about to happen, like this will shatter our understanding of who we are and what like our basic systems that are going on here it will be the end of empires crowns will fall societies will collapse and uh, this guy says no and he says and i'm begging you in the last sense of all that is good and pure please no and this guy says once again no and he rises to his feet and says like here you go well it's my dutiful honor then to tell you that we're now currently at war and I hear like a month later like a million men are dead and I think it was like the lives of 10 million more are killed in this conflict and it really did shatter the understanding the prior understanding and it really gave way to the, a sense of new understandings of things and I don't know if I'm trying to I don't think I'm articulating this but through, throughout all I feel like through probably out all conflicts there's always been naysayers and uh, whether it's someone who is a conscientious objector or just a straight up protester or or something I, I don't know if there's ever been a a conflict that everyone has single-handedly been on board with. I don't know if we're ever about to experience alien planetary invasion where they're going to try to wipe out the human race. Maybe yeah, that will be a... Common enemy. <laughs> like, for our very survival. Yeah. Say we must unite against the aliens and... And once we get rid of them, we can go back Yeah, go back then. <laughs> but listen here, motherfucker. I got a score to settle with you. Yeah. But uh, there have been times where... Well, certainly people have put aside their differences for a common enemy, but... I wonder if, uh... Because one of the th ways that I... Um... The, the answer that pops into my head to the question is, uh... The only ethic... I mean... It's hard because it would have to require of everyone to jump on board with an ethic... And there are racists out there and psychopaths and what are you going to do with them? And I mean, you're never going to have everyone on the same page, but <clears throat> it's the, the martial artist ethic or the old samurai stories. Like this one of my favorite dialogues between a samurai master and a student. And it's just that uh, they're gardening and uh, the, the apprentice asks his master, 
you, you're always teaching me how to, you know, fillet people apart with 